He's a famous artist with a famous mustache. And this is Andre Breton. He's also famous, but you've probably never heard of him. He did not have a mustache. Breton and Dali both became known for their role in a group called the Surrealists. And when you look at what that group did, you might think they were all crazy, but they were actually quite serious. And they ended up changing the course of history. Well, art history anyway. People use the word surreal to describe things that are crazy or too strange to be real. But surrealism was about more than just melting clocks. It was about philosophy, politics, art, and the revolution. Surrealism was a movement, a group of people who focused on the world of dreams in order to create a new reality, a reality that was beyond real or surreal. To understand surrealism, you have to understand Paris in the early 1900s. It was stuffy, proper, full of rational, well-mannered people buying mild, decorative art and living life on their best behavior. And then, the world went to war. World War I changed everything. Andre Breton, who was a 19-year-old poet at the time, was sent to war as a medic, and that is a seriously traumatic way to grow up. For four straight years, Europe was violence, disease, and death. Soldiers watched whole cities crumble, suffered gas attacks, and rotted alive in the trenches. Nearly 60% of the men who went to war suffered casualties. By the end of the war, almost 38 million people were injured, imprisoned, missing, or dead. Afterwards, Europe was a disaster. Breton and everyone else who made it out alive were scarred for life, and the world as they knew it was basically ruined. The war made people question their own society and start to look for a different way to live. Breton and his friends figured that if the traditional, rational approach to life had ended in war, maybe it was time to try something new. They began rebelling against authority, the government, the church, the well-to-do members of society, and did everything they could to disrupt order. They joined an aggressive group called Dada that used art to make political statements, and they acted out against anyone telling them how to live their life. This was a totally different type of art. But Breton and his friends truly thought they could avoid another war by inspiring others to reject the reasonable, rational way of thinking that Europe was used to. They were looking for revolution. They didn't find it in Dada, but after months of experimental writing, Breton had a breakthrough. He had an inspiring dream about a man cut in half by a window. When he woke up, he realized we're not in control of everything that goes on in our mind. There's a hidden part, a disorderly imagination, and this is called the unconscious. Sigmund Freud, the father of the unconscious, first identified this hidden or unconscious part of our brain. He said the conscious mind contains the thoughts we're aware of, but it only makes up a small part of what's going on in our head. Inside the unconscious mind is the stuff we're not aware of, the deep, hidden part of ourselves that drives our fears, desires, and strange ideas. The unconscious mind creates our irrational thoughts, or the thoughts that confuse, scare, and disgust us. This was the revolutionary idea Breton had been looking for. He believed that when people ignore or suppress their irrational thoughts, they become imbalanced, and that leads to an imbalanced society, which then leads to horrible things like war. To create more balance, Breton wanted to access the unconscious mind and set the irrational thoughts free. He and a bunch of other radical writers got together to do just that. They called themselves Surrealists. As their leader, Breton wrote and published a book called The Manifesto of Surrealism, where he defined the word and officially established the group and their goals. <laughs>